Welcome back to uh, part two of the France Vicat debate. Greece, uh, the latest deadline. Alexis Tsipras has until midnight Paris time to put forward fresh proposals to secure a third bailout and prevent that much dreaded Grexit. Greece's future in the Eurozone has never been more in the balance than it is as we speak. So where can Tsipras go? His one-time financial guru, Yaris Varoufakis, has driven off on his Harley-Davidson motorbike. He resigned no sooner. The result of the referendum was published. What can Tsipras cut? Greeks are reduced to a 60-euro-a-day withdrawal limit at cash points. Banks are closed. The financial system at a standstill. The social cost visible on every street corner. So what are the solutions? Would Grexit be a disaster for the Greek people? Would it lead to the disintegration of the EU? Is it just the Germans who've got most to lose? Many questions. Let's try and get some answers. We've got uh, our guests, uh, Natalie Savarikas, of course, our correspondent based in Greece, who's been following this uh, from day one. Natalie, thank you very much for joining us. Can I start with a, a personal question, if you don't mind? Uh, not too personal, so don't worry. Um, 60 euros a day, how are you managing? To be honest, it's been so busy here that I haven't even had time to think about it. Um, it's, it's, it's not easy, I'll tell you that much. I mean, you, you feel like a 12-year-old again because you need to kind of ration your day accordingly. So if I use a taxi to get me like from home to work, that's going to be like around 15 euros. So you need to think of, of the rest of your day quite carefully, whether it's shop, shopping, supermarkets, whether it's just to go for a quick uh, dinner somewhere or lunch in between uh, work. So it's, it's not easy. Luckily, uh, the administration has said that, you know, you're not uh, obliged to pay all your bills and your uh, tax returns at the moment. You won't be penalized if you're not going to if you're going to delay it. So for the moment, I'm getting it easy. I think it's it's very difficult for the businessmen out there and especially uh, for the pensioners who very many of them don't even have a cash card to withdraw money and need to queue outside banks, as we saw today and last week, to get a fraction just of their uh, pension out from uh, specific banks in every municipality. I think the hardship is clearer uh, on their faces as we saw the pictures emerging from Greece. It's a very sad not sad. Tragic situation, Natalie. Uh, what you've just spoken about there. Pensioners who can't get their hands on their cash. Uh, you must witness on a day-to-day -day basis, just as you walk to and from your place of work, all these tragedies being played out on the streets. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I went out uh, to, to meet those pensioners uh, last week, to be honest. Today, uh, I didn't. But uh, last week, it was just, you saw, you know, the, the, the elderly, uh, one with the cane, uh, all quite trying to remain quite stoic, um, I must admit. Uh, but, you know, my big question is, how, how on earth do you survive with 120 years uh, a week? And the answer of many was like, well, you know, young lady, uh, many of us don't make more than 500 a month. So this this is kind of our, our weekly ration anyways. Uh, and that is when it hits you, you know, the austerity measure in Greece. Uh, nearly 40% of pensioners live uh, on the brink of poverty. Uh, and that's the truth. I mean, the pensions in Greece, um, Mark, is the, it's basically well be, below the uh, Eurozone average. And yet, 16 pensions represent 16% of the Greek economy. So there must be some sort of reform here. Uh, the Greek uh, question is how to do it in order to protect these people, the most vulnerable, who have spent years contributing uh, to, uh, to these institutions. Natalie, stay with us. Just going to show the viewers the images uh, from Athens of the pro-Europe uh, demonstration which is happening. These are people who are uh, saying that Greece needs to be uh, within the euro, needs to be within the EU. Uh, many of them there. I sense that's very much near your position, uh, Natalie. Tell us what you can see from there. Well, uh, as you'll see, we have like uh, thousands of people which are rallied right outside uh, that neoclassical building, which is the, the country's parliament. Um, many of them, you know, interestingly, it's their first time at a protest. So you'll see them with their designer handbags, um, with their heels, uh, but all there, very serious. You know, they're worried not only about their country's fate, uh, but crucially about uh, their kids. Many children and, and youth out there who don't know what it means uh, to be outside the Eurozone, who can't even, you know, fathom the idea of their country not being a part of the Eurozone, the Euro currency, and crucially, the European Union. Uh, they really know what's at stake here. Uh, admittedly, uh, many uh, people that I've seen haven't been as hit 
uh, by the austerity measure, measures. They're the, if you like, either the upper class or the middle classes, but many also just ordinary people, you know, who just understand uh, what European Union means and, and what, you know, the, the whole project entails and why it would be so devastating for Greece uh, to so uh, radically and abruptly and violently, uh, you know, be pushed out the door uh, on Sunday if the administration doesn't uh, provide uh, measures that would meet the creditor standards. Natalie, what are they saying about Alexei Tsipras? Ah, well, you know, uh, people out there aren't very happy. They're, many are calling him either a coward or even a traitor. But, you know, irrespective of what they're saying, on Sunday he did get 61% uh, of the votes behind them. And, and that's the maestro game uh, he's played. He has the majority of the Greek population endorsing him, supporting him. Uh, so, interestingly, whatever measures he'll push through, uh, he got their backing uh, on Sunday. Uh, he got even the political leaders to uh, endorse him, although uh, the leader of New Democracy, the main opposition party, is now um, uh, kind of, you know, stepping back from this. But whatever happens, he's managed to rally most of Greece behind him, and he'll implement far tougher austerity measures that were initially proposed just a few weeks ago. So, uh, you know, that's why you'll see very few Greeks outside in the protest. You won't see any uh, opposition, uh, you know, large opposition crowds. This is pretty impressive, but nothing, nothing to compare the pro-Syriza um, movement uh, that we saw last week ahead of the crucial referendum. Natalie, thank you. I'm going to bring in our second guest now, Natalie, but bear with us and try and find out if you can. Cypress got 61% in the referendum. Has he got more than 61 euros in his wallet? That's what I'd like to know. Thank you, Natalie. It's, uh, in many ways, a flippant question, but it's pertinent, isn't it? Because if Greeks can yeah. only take out so much cash, okay. well, maybe we should need to know whether the leader has the same restrictions. Leader or not, he's still a Greek person. He's got to live with the strictures that he puts on the people. Let's bring in our second guest, uh, a man with uh, maybe a different perspective. Let's find out. He is uh, Henk uh, Uteveda. Henk, thank you for joining us. I understand you're from the um, Franco-German Institute, uh, joining us there uh, from... Um, you're in Stuttgart. Excellent. Thank yes, you, Henk, for being I with am. us. <laughs> um, Good evening to you. Can I, can I start by asking, is it only Germany that has a problem with Grexit? or Because uh, well, Germany obviously has a big exposure to Greek debt. Well, I think the, the, the Grexit question is, is a European one. And there are, well, differentiated uh, answers to that. Uh, up to now, uh, if the Grexit uh, topic is very popular in the public opinion and in some uh, yellow press uh, publications, it is a word, it's a, it's a non-word. Uh, it's not uh, used by, by the German government. They, they, they still stick to the task to do nearly everything in order to hold Greece in the Eurozone, but not unconditionally, uh, at the condition that the Greek government takes every effort necessary uh, to be able to, to keep in the Eurozone. So this is, is our thing, and, and, and it's, uh, uh, up to now, uh, it is not discussed. We are now focusing on Greek proposals, on, on the possibility of avoiding uh, Grexit, and uh, afterwards, we will, if, if ever it fails, we'll talk about Grexit. But in, now it is not really a, a topic. Henrik, if except, I had... Except um, in, in public discussions and, and some, some economists and, and so on, that, that's clear. And, but and it, all the media. <laughs> that's no official subject. OK. OK. If I had Angela Merkel on one side of my studio and François Hollande on the other, this is the question I'd put to them. You're from the Franco-German Institute. I've got to put it to you, but I'm not blaming you, OK? How do you feel when you see and hear about Greek people, about pensioners who can't get their cash, about the problems they're going through because of this austerity? Well, um, I, I think there is a point to, uh, to, the, to the Troika measures and the Troika, um, uh, well, uh, conditions which they impose to Greece. And there's a, there's a real question if this is not the wrong way. So, so as far as that, I, I do agree. As for, um, when I see the... the uh, the pictures and the, on television on Greece, uh, in Greece today and yesterday and so on, well, 
It's not only the Troika, nor, nor the, neither the, 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 the other Europeans who are to blame. It's also the Greek government. Greek government has played with time when there was no more time. So uh, they have wasted, uh, literally wasted time. And so the, the closing of the banks is not a decision of the European Union or the Troika or everything. It is a consequence of the Greek government uh, not, not com complying and uh, not, to, not, uh, not uh, agreeing to, to really tr uh, work seriously on, uh, on, the, on, on the reform program. That's what they, uh, uh, it seems that, uh, they're working tonight. Well, tonight it's really uh, midnight uh, minus one minute or even 30 seconds. So uh, don't blame Troika and austerity for everything uh, which goes wrong in Greece. So I, I would not agree. OK, Henry, stay with us uh, for a second. Let's go back to Natalie Savarakas, of course, who's awaiting okay. us uh, there uh, in Athens. Uh, Natalie, we've heard uh, Henrik there speaking from Stuttgart, uh, blaming in many ways the Greek government for what's happened. Uh, Varoufakis has now ridden off on his motorbike. Uh, does the new man have any better solutions, do you think? Well, listen, uh, I think uh, a large chunk of the Greek population is going to agree there. They are blaming uh, not only, I mean, the current government still is kind of absolved of the, the, you know, the blaming game. I think the succession of Greek administrations that we've seen for the past 40 years is to blame this uh, endemic corruption that has actually, you know, uh, dropped quite significantly over the past few years as the Europeans have tried to push, you know, with the austerity measures. There is a slight shift in uh, mentality here and all the bureaucracy. There is, I mean, although at a not the fast pace, you can't explain you know transformations in five years but there has been uh, some pretty important and drastic changes that have you know happened in Greece uh, I agree that the um, administration here is a, a newbie if you like uh, this is the first time in government uh, they you know rose up to power with these like grand uh, eloquent uh, uh, promises of ridding austerity and putting an end to it I think they were kind of you know hit with reality that you know it's not going to happen and they wasted a lot of precious time uh, in kind of you know becoming realistic and pushing forward come realistic proposals. A lot of bravado as well, which was wasted. And many Greeks will tell you on either side that you know we were voting no to austerity, but you know the go Greek government has made a few big mistakes there, and this referendum wasn't really necessary or should have happened a few days ago. And we'll see it just in the numbers, you know, mathematically. Now the fiscal, you know, gap is much bigger because of this, like, forced bank holiday. The government will have to impose harsher measures. We're hearing up to 12 billion euros when just a few days ago it was 8 billion euros. So, you know, there are big mistakes that have taken place, absolutely, but none as big as the previous administrations uh, that ruled this country. It would be fascinating just to hear how the Greek people react to that, this idea that they may have to have cope with greater austerity. As you pointed out, Natalie, it's, it seems like a ridiculous deal to have to, to, have to countenance, to have to accept in, in, in many ways. Tsipras, Varoufakis, are they the men who will be blamed? I think in many respects uh, Tsipras might come out of this uh, as uh, the leader uh, because, uh, and don't ask me how he's achieved this, but he has. I mean, I think it goes back to the expression of, you know, beware of Greek bearing gifts. He gave them the referendum. He gave Greeks after five years of austerity to, you know, raise and, and voice their anger and say no to Europe, no to being a colony uh, of the European Union. So, you know, after saying that, they kind of feel conspirators. They're, they're like participating in this blame and they're well aware of it and that's why despite the queues at the ATMs despite the problems of all this you haven't seen many people protesting angrily protesting as we've seen in the past five years uh, of this Greek crisis we've seen like pretty violent scenes uh, on our TV screens and us reporting here of Greeks angry with the cuts and everything but with all this they have been pretty silent and muted I don't think Tsipras nor Varoufakis will be held accountable with this I think Euclid Sakalotos uh, especially when it comes to the creditors is seen as a very reasonable voice someone they can talk to he was born in Rotterdam he grew up you know and he had a British uh, uh, elitist education they see him as someone they can speak to and uh, 
especially after Varoufakis, they see him as a breath of fresh air. And this could play in Greece's favor, but at the end of the day, it's all about what's in the proposals and not about the personality. Indeed, Natalie. Bear, bear with us for a moment. Let's bring uh, Henry back in from uh, Stuttgart. Natalie Sarakis, of course, uh, Greeks bearing gifts. Beware of them, she says, unless, of course, they're Natalie. All gifts uh, ac ac accepted from her, of course. Uh, let's bring um, Henrik Utevede back in from the Franco-German Institute in uh, Stuttgart. Uh, Henrik, I hope you can still hear us. Uh, good to have you with us on the debate here. Um, Donald Tusk, the EU Council President, earlier talking about... Um, more realistic proposals needed from Greece, but also talking about um, equally realistic proposals on debt sustainability coming from the creditors, the creditors, France, Germany, all the creditors, the IMF, the EU, everybody. Um, do they need to be more realistic? What's your view? Well, um, don't ask that our Minister of Finance today, but I think um, we are aware in Germany uh, 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 the government and public opinion that there is a real problem of debt sustainability. Uh, only, I think, in the, in the view of the German government, uh, there is a sort of, uh, uh, well, o order of, 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 of tackling the problems. And what is demanded by the German government is that the Greek makes first serious steps and show their seriousness and their willingness to tackle the structural problems of the, of the, of the country, which have been enumerated by, by my correspondent in, in, in Athens. So, uh, and, and I think the moment when the Greek government shows this seriousness, uh, as our minister said today, don't just talk, act, just do it. And at the moment, very moment, when the Greek government shows seriousness and tack, begins to tackle problems and, and, and tries to get political support in, within the proper party and, and, and the parliament to, to overcome these structural problems, then I think it would be easier for Germany uh, to talk about, to talk seriously about uh, debt relief, uh, and, and about tackling the, 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 uh, the, the problem of debt sustainability. So I agree with, with Mr. Tusk, uh, but we have to see these things together. But um, as much time has been wasted, as much confidence has been destroyed by, by the provocative and polar, polariza polar, polar, polarization attitude of the polarization of, of, uh, by, 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 the, by the Greek side. So I think um, what is needed now is a first sign, a serious sign of willingness uh, to act, and perhaps the first acts, and then I think no one in Germany will say no to serious discussions about debt relief. Henrik, thank you. Your, your English, I must underline, is excellent. Uh, we're all allowed a little uh, ah, stutter over a word or two. It's far better than my German. Danke sehr. And stay with us, please. Let's bring in Natalie again from uh, Athens. Uh, Natalie, in terms of debt restructuring, it's something I'd like to have. Uh, definitely. I'm not going to ask you about your personal finances. I've done enough of that already, I think. Um, in terms of what this would mean for Greece, I suppose it could be a lifeline, couldn't it? Absolutely. I think this is uh, essentially what this administration now uh, really wants. Uh, unless there's, I mean, the, the debt is absolutely mo monumental here. It's well over the 240 billion. That's only uh, the loan package, so it extends well beyond that. Um, Greece, I mean, especially with the austerity measures, you know, implemented. I was just, I mean, just a, a brief example. I was just speaking to a cafe owner who's going to probably see the attack, the VAT tax go from 13% to 23%. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm making money now, but if you increase the tax, you know, I, I won't be able to pay my taxes. Let's be honest about it. He's like, he admitted it to me. I'm going to have to tax avoid. So if the Greek government increases this austerity and all these tax hikes, it's going to see its income and its revenues, you know, reduce. I mean, it's, it's, it, it goes without saying Greeks need to survive. So the debt will ha then, with, if its revenues are just shrinking, it will never be able to pay off the debt. Um, and anyways, it's so big with the like, economy now set to actually you know, shrink even more instead of like, the growth that was projected because of these capital controls and, and this bank revenue. Unless there is a debt restructuring, um, I seriously doubt as well. And I'm just echoing economists. I've been interviewing my finances and better than the average moon. But um, there it, 
there's no way Greece will get out of this. OK, debt restructuring essential. Natalie, thank you very much. Bear with us. Let's bring uh, Henry back in uh, from Stuttgart. Uh, in terms of the idea of debt restructuring, sir, um, what would the view be from Angela Merkel's office on this? About debt relief, well, I, I think um, a simple haircut is, is uh, not the thing uh, the German government sees it, because treaties and the no bail bailout clause uh, interdicts uh, um, a simple haircut. But there are other ways, there are other means, uh, even pointed uh, by the Greek government, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to have a, a real debt relief and the relief of, of, of the debt burden. Uh, you can't postpone uh, the deadlines of, of paying back and, and so on. So, but again, I think you will not have Angela Merkel <laughs> if she was here. She would say no word about that. She would uh, say, well, let's first look what the Greeks are proposing. Is it serious? Is it, uh, is it uh, a basis in order to keep on with Greek within the Eurozone? And then afterwards, we may talk about that. So sh you should put the question to her, uh, say, in the next couple of, of days. So, uh, and, and I think in, in, the, in the German government, you will not find anyone who, who, who would go further. I, uh, at my personal view, and I think it is shared by many scholars and by many uh, experts, is is that there is a real problem of uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, I mean, the uh, IMF has pointed uh, to that and so on. And, and the Germans wanted the IMF to be within the party of, uh, of, of, uh, to, to, to tackle the problem. So I think there will be, there will be willingness of the German government to, to, uh, uh, to find solutions. And as our cha chancellor uh, likes to put it, where there is a will, political will, there is a way. Let's hope well, that there happens. Will be a way. Uh, Henry Gunterwetter in uh, Stuttgart from the uh, Franco German Institute. Uh, danke sehr. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Danke, danke schön. And also thank you to our correspondent, Natalie Savarakas. Afaristo, uh, I'll try and make it a bit of Greek as well. Thank you for being with us too. Uh, that uh, concludes uh, our France Van Cat debate. Time now for a look at uh, matters buzzing across the media network. For that tonight, we're joined by none other than Emma James, okay. right here in the studio. Good to see you. Looking at the latest reactions to uh, all the events coming out of Greece. Emma. Yes, it seems the only people that are having any fun right now are the cartoonists. Um, if we take a look at this offering from Christian Adams, uh, he has Angela Merkel painted as a rather busty barmaid, and um, the sign reads, The Last Chance Beer Keller. And the uh, sign that she's pointing to, because of course she is indeed serving and uh, Alexi Tsipras there says... Um, Tsipras looking a bit the worse for wear. Eh? Very much the worse for wear and the sign reads, do not ask for credit as refusal may offend. Uh, that's one of my <laughs> favourites from today I have to say. Uh, Elve Baudry has also been uh, drawing on this matter um, and he's painted uh, Angela Merkel as bad cop and Francois Hollande as good cop and the reason for that, if we take a look at some more serious coverage of this uh, story the Times reports that Hollande is fighting the rear guard for Greece um, they say that basically the president has cast France as the potential saviour of the Eurozone. With the clock ticking, they say France is making a frantic backstage attempt to stop the Greeks from making an exit from the Eurozone. Uh, but they do deny reports that they, they've been helping directly write those reforms with the new finance minister, because that has been said. But Fran the French government has denied that that is the case. Now, France accepts it's in a tiny minority now, with most countries beginning to accept that a Brexit is basically nothing more than so an imminent... Just to, just to, and you'll bear, me, bear with me on this one, I know, it's Germany, it's France, it's Italy, they're the three that are really exposed most to the Greek debt, aren't they? Yes, and so it would appear that France are the ones who are really standing alone and saying, let's bail them out of this, let's get them, secure their place within the Eurozone. Okay, any other um, saviours uh, in waiting who uh, may be 
uh, working on the Greek uh, behalf? Well, interestingly, it would appear that the United States is finally standing up to be counted when it comes to Greece. Um, if we look at the Telegraph here, they say Europeans told to bring Greece back from the brink and avoid dissent into uncontrolled Grexit. Uh, now, Obama, just a, a matter of a few weeks ago, had essentially said that Greece was Europe's problem. While he recognised that there could be global implications, he didn't feel that it was for the United States to get involved. Now, the White House is really stepping up its warnings of the geopolitical and the financial dangers of what is potentially about to happen. They say that letting Greece go could mean a future of riots and chaos for Athens. Earlier this week, the US president urged Angela Merkel to find a solution, as though that's not what everyone's trying to do in Europe right now. Um, but interestingly, the US Treasury Secretary, that's Jacob Liu, says both sides are gambling with the stability of the global economy. So suddenly they're not talking about Europe anymore, they're talking globally. It's interesting on that point, Amber, precisely, I mean, kind of naive of Obama to say what he said initially, given the impact that everybody's warning about this could have a knock-on effect across the entire world. Absolutely, because I remember the press conference, it was literally just a couple of weeks ago and he was asked about the Greece situation and, and what he thought about it and his response was very much, well we're keeping an eye on it but it's Europe's problem. Um, but all that is changing now and Jacob Liu, the US Treasury Secretary, has also said that you wouldn't usually buy hundreds of billions of dollars of risk for a few billion. So clearly they feel that it's worth losing those few billion to Greece to bail them out to write off their debts in order to save the potential heartache that could come if they don't go ahead with that. Now Charles Crawford, who's a former UK diplomat, has uh, rather neatly summed this one up. Um, the EU is like that cartoon character that races over the edge of the cliff and runs far out into thin air before pausing for thought. And that is an image that we will leave our viewers with, Cypras off the cliff like that, like the Coyote and Roadrunner. Yeah? Exactly. Emma James with Media Watch, we need to leave it there. You've got lo lo so much more to say, and Emma back, of course, with uh, two, three, four, who knows, appearances during the evening to tell uh, you all what's happening on the media. Uh, that concludes uh, this uh, section of Life in Paris. But stay tuned, of course. So much more to come.